It's round two of the FIM Supermoto World Championship. Sardinia plays host to the stars of the series this time at the Sardinia Circuit in Tramazza. West of mainland Italy, this is one of the most beautiful islands in Europe. Sardinia plays host to gorgeous natural vistas and a vibrant local culture with long-standing traditions. Of course, there's no lack of coastlines to take your breath away here. It's one of the true must-visit regions of the 20 that form Italy. The island is also famous in car rallying circles. I think it's fair to say that many of the island's 1.6 million residents are always excited when World Championship level motorsport comes to town. In the challenging conditions that punctuated our season opener in Busca, Steve Bonnell showed his mettle. The youngster scored his first Grand Prix podium and leads the rookie classification. I'm in the team uh, TC4 and one uh, racing team and uh, with a good rider with Thomas Charer and uh, Roman Cavers. So we are a really very good team. So we have uh, we have uh, good info for, from Tom and uh, we're pushing a lot of the tr with the track. So yeah, in Busca was a very good, very good weekend for me. I make my first uh, race podium, so I, I'm happy for me, for the team, for so everyone. So I can I can try to make the same in, here in Sardinia, but with the rain. So so yeah, I'm first in rookie class, so I have a good rider in rookie class too with uh, Andreas Buschberger, uh, Romeo Fiorentino, and Tim Zai, So. Yeah, it's good. It's good class, and uh, we try to push a lot for for get the title in the end of the year. Onto the circuit itself, and unfortunately, the rain has arrived here. Owing to the conditions, there was no choice for the organisers, who were forced to cut the red labelled dirt section for this weekend. Tarmac only for our riders then and no ruined shoes for our track guides, Nico Grazioli and Daniele Di Cicco. So here we are in a sequence of five turns that must be performed in a very particular way. Practically, they must be tackled as if they were a single curve. Here we approach the curb and we have to stay away quite far from it because it becomes very slippery. We then face this left right, being careful not to touch the paint in order to have maximum speed. There are two ways to approach this corner. The first is to cut over the curb or you can stay on the asphalt. By using the curb, you arrive wider at the next bend and you can line it up better but we have to let go of the brake to get over the depression of the curb. Meanwhile, using the asphalt line is smoother, but with more changes of direction and perhaps using the rear brake to make a pendulum drift. In this corner, instead you have to stay wide rather than go to the apex of the curve because it is important in the second part to stay narrow to the right to line up the next turn better under the Alpina side. The conditions aren't getting any nicer, but our riders are ready to show us the lap on board. Off the line and almost immediately we head through the narrow first chicane. There is some runoff to play with, but it's going to be difficult to find space in the pack. This double apex left leads you into the first of the hairpins. It is, of course, a left-hander. This braking zone is one of the best overtaking areas on the lap, but there is potential for your rival to retaliate immediately into the right-hand hairpin that follows. We now pick up the speed only momentarily before we go through this long right-hander, get more of these painted curves that will likely be avoided so long as the rain looms large. Through this left-hander that would normally be followed by the dirt, however, because of the significant rain that has hit the area, we continue left on the tarmac. The run through this right-hander is a little more sedate in these wet conditions. They're also approaching the corner slower without the dirt section. Just a few corners from home now. This weekend's lout is a little over a kilometre, so traffic management could be key at the front. This sequence of left-hand bends is followed by a quick flip to the right, and that's your lap here in Sardinia.
In the All Asphalt FIM S4 European Championship, the defending champion is Alex Ruiz Jimenez, but he'll introduce himself. Hi everyone, I'm Ruiz and I'm participating in the S4 European Supermoto Championship. Last year we won the European Asphalt Championship, we started very well in the two Busca races and the same goes for Alcaraz in Spain. In the last race, it was very difficult, but we managed to win the European Championship. This year in Busca, we didn't start well. In qualifying, we were in the 107s, and that's the second off where we were last year. Then it rained, and it was very difficult. We gave our all, and in race one, we managed to take a third place, followed by a second place in race number two. Here in Sardinia, we will give our best. The forecasts predict rain for the whole week, so the circuit will always be wet. We'll try to get a good result and to take the lead in the championship. Jimenez took two wins in Sardinia and is just two points behind championship leader Kevin Vandy. Race one of the weekend, and it's Thomas Charest on pole position with Schmidt and Hulbacher alongside him, Bonnell, Buschberger, and Elia Samartin on row two, Giovanni Basai, Roman Cavers, Milan Tignanski on row three, followed by Zalai, Fiorentino, and Katarine. I understand Lucas Hulbacher has gone for a slick on the rear. Let's see if that pays off in these damp conditions. It's Thomas Charest that leads in the early stages. We've got contact further back. I believe Romeo Fiorentino was involved in that, and we can see already that the MTR KTM rider Lucas Hulbacher is struggling in the early stages. Of course, that tyre is going to take a little while longer than the treaded wet. Uh, to come up to temperature in these conditions. You can see that there are still certainly wet patches around the circuit, but it hasn't been raining for the last couple of hours here uh, over the Sardinia circuit. So maybe as the race wears on, it will fall into Hullbacker's favour. Francois Cormart there getting back up after the first corner tangle. Andreas Buschberger losing out there. Uh, to Elias Samartin on the 32, so Buschberger on the Husqvarna dropping down to fifth place. Looks like in seventh position we have Milan Sitniansky as well, so Sitniansky on the 1-2-1 one, one, making some good ground. Steve Bonnell up in second place yet again. Bonnell not only marking himself as the most competitive rookie in the early stages of the season, but also a legitimate contender up against the likes of Charest and Schmidt, and that doesn't come easily. Mark Reiner Schmidt keeping a watching brief at the moment on Steve Bonnell. And trying to go around the outside in the final section of the lap. Can't quite get it done there, but does get a good run onto the main straight. Can he get it done at turn one? Yes, but both riders end up on the paint and you don't want to do that when it's been raining. You see the dark clouds overhead. We never seem to be too far from rainfall here this weekend, but it is currently drying on the circuit. Andreas Buschberger in fifth position, but here comes Lucas Hullbacher up the inside. Hullbacher makes the move for fifth. I'm sure Andreas Buschberger will immediately try and dive back. He does, but can't quite get it done. Of course, Buschberger last year was on an MTR KTM. This year, he is on a Husqvarna. There is our race leader, Thomas Charret, on the number four. He's got a fairly comfortable lead there at the front, already picking his way through traffic this early in the race. A consequence of the circuit Reduced to just one kilometre because of the lack of dirt section. The dirt simply not passable in the conditions that Italy has experienced at large this weekend. Mark Reiner Schmidt on the number one L30 bike in second place has managed to gap Steve Bonnell now. And look at Lucas Hulbacher. Hulbacher in fourth position all over the back of Steve Bonnell for the time being. 
So it strikes me that Hullbacker's gamble regarding the tyres is just starting to pay off. This is Schmidt across the line for second. And here comes Bonnell and Hullbacker. Hullbacker trying to find a way through, and I think he may well have done it. Yes, Lucas Hullbacker has gotten through into third position there. I think it's falling ever more in his favour, the weather conditions. Pretty much the only rider out there to have gone with a slick on the rear. And now that that tyre is up to temperature and as the circuit continues to dry, Hullbacker is finding more and more speed. Next target, the two-time champion, Mark Reiner Schmidt. And Schmidt is being closed in on here. Schmidt is demoted to third position once again at the hairpin. Lucas Hullbacker has made that his overtaking zone already. And second place now belongs to the Austrian Meisterbacher, Master Baker. His family baking business has been operating for 900 years. Thomas Charret, not quite that experienced, but a very experienced rider. He's keeping himself tidy at the moment, but he's losing time to Hullbacker. I wasn't sure that Hullbacker would close in on Charret, but it's happened. Lap 17 of the race, and Lucas Hullbacker is right there with Thomas Charret. Can he get the move done? To the hairpin once again, and yes, Lucas Hullbacker has done it. Hullbacker into the lead. Lucas Hullbacker, your race leader, made that gamble for the slick rear, and it's paid off massively. He's taken the lead. Didn't have the strongest time of it in Busca, our season opener. But a full haul of points in race number one is going to go some way to cheering him up. Super difficult conditions now. Uh, the track going to dry condition during the race. So the deciding in front of the race was to put uh, the slick tire on the back. Uh, and the risk was OK. We put the jolly. We uh, we was not sure if it's working, but it worked. Uh, so on the beginning, I was on fifth, sixth position, and then I worked step by step to first position. And Thomas struggled with the rain tire completely, and then uh, was easy for me to overtook and take the first place. There you go, Hullbacker's big gamble paying off. He takes 25 points from race number one. Big optimism for KTM going into Sunday. So then Sunday in Sardinia, a busy weekend for all of our riders. Thomas Charret posing with a second consecutive Metzler Super Bowl. Uh, lots of fans in attendance as always at Sardinia for the FIM Supermoto World Championship in spite of the weather. Two races on Sunday. And this is the first of them, the fast race, and it gets underway. Thomas Charret with a good start. He leads into the first corner. Mark Reiner Schmidt down to second place as Lucas Hullbacker has moved up into P2. Uh, towards the first hairpin they go, and oh, that's a big slide on a slightly damp patch there for Lucas Hullbacker. He drops down to third place then. Mark Reiner Schmidt in second. Lucas Hullbacker under pressure now from Andreas Buschberger, who again is having a really good weekend. Buschberger on the Husqvarna in fourth place in the early going. Behind him in fifth is Steve Bonnell. It's Charret, though, that leads the way. Mark Reiner Schmidt will be determined to get past over the course of this 16 lap race. 16 laps feels like a lot for a fast race, but of course, quite the short circuit that we're running this weekend at Sardinia. Over the curbs they go with a lot more confidence than they did in race one yesterday. I believe we had more rain overnight, but it's dried out a little bit before this fast race has gotten started. Thomas Charret, though, our leader. Schmidt in second place. You see Hullbacker still there in third. Buschberger not dropping back either from his fellow Austrian. Really getting close to the rear tyre there of Lucas Hullbacker, the former teammate, 
running well. Good to see two Austrian racers so high up the order. This weekend, Buschberger really coming into his own, seemingly on this Husqvarna as he gets more and more used to it. After time on the KTM previously. Charer and Schmidt still 1-2, and where Charer built a lead yesterday, he's got no such luck today. Thomas Charer under immense pressure from Mark Reiner Schmidt, who looks to the outside there get the feeling that Reiner Schmidt has more pace. It's just a matter of getting past Charer and the door's been left open an iota there. That could be the opportunity that Schmidt needs. And through has gone Mark Reiner Schmidt. Andreas Buschberger has also gotten up into third place there in the back of shot. We're going to get a replay of what happened with Holbacher and Buschberger. And almost identical really to the schmidt Charer overtake, although I think Schmidt and Charret checked up a little bit more. But two position switches in one corner there. Buschberger and Hurlbacher fighting for that third position. Then, of course, Hurlbacher will be determined to get some more points than fourth place provides. After getting the full haul of 25 in race one, he could really do with a podium finish here. But look at Andreas Buschberger. Buschberger has been sensational in this race. He's really found some speed. Milan, Sidney Anske, have Tim Sly and Romeo Fiorentino there in 10th, 11th and 12th positions. Vanderberg, Vandermel and Corman running in 16th, 17th and 18th place as well. Some good battling up and down the order. As Schmidt and Charret. Continue to be line astern. I thought that uh, once Schmidt got by, he'd disappear, but that's not the case as Andreas Buschberger makes Thomas Charret very aware of his presence. Buschberger a little bit further back after having to check up there. Don't know if he's going to close in on, on the top two again before the end of this race. Maybe if Charret makes a lunch. Andreas Buschberger heads on to the final lap and he's definitely getting closer once again to the back of the two TMs. It's TM from TM. Then it's the Husqvarna and then it's the KTM in fourth position. Charer again tries to look for a way past Mark Reiner Schmidt, but Schmidt looks to be in control. They're going through the traffic, of course. And opportunity did not quite knock for Thomas Charret. Mark Reiner Schmidt takes it. Fast race goes to the German Mark Reiner Schmidt with 25 points. Buschberger on the Husqvarna with a brilliant podium finish in the fast race. Holbacher and Katarine round out our top five. A yeah, fast race works well for me after the start was not so good but I could pass Lucas and Tommy Midati. Make my pace, make my race. I enjoy it a lot. We improve a lot from yesterday and yeah I can't wait for the super final. And yeah, thanks to my sponsors and my team, we did the step on top and I will do it again, hopefully in the Super Finals. See you there. There you go. So then our points, look at that. One point separating the top three going into the Super Final. Thomas Charret with one point over Schmidt and Holbacher. The Super Final then, and it's Mark Reiner Schmidt on pole position. Tom Charret and Andreas Buschberger on the first row. Then it's Hurlbacker, Katarine, and Steve Bonnell on row two. Row three, Elias Samartin, Giovanni Busai, and Roman Kivers, Fiorentino, Zalai, and Sidney Ansky on row four. Lights out then, and it's time to go racing. It's a slightly poor start there from Mark Reiner-Schmidt. That allows Tom Charret into the lead. Andreas Buschberger holds on to third place. Of course, he's the leader within the rookie class as well. Comfortable points lead within the rookie class coming into this last race. Yuri Katerin there in fifth, also in the rookie class. Steve Bonnell is down in seventh, not being able to uh, get a great start on the first lap then. But already the top two starting to break away just a little bit. Mark Reiner-Schmidt hounding the back of Thomas Charrer, our race leader. The eight-time world champion from the reigning and two-time world champion at the front of the order. Such a pleasure to have these two Supermoto greats running in the same era with so many stellar challengers. 
not least of which Lucas Holbacker, but Andreas Buschberger really showing his hand this weekend. We have some seriously incredible riders coming up through the rookie class. Steve Bonnell, Yuri Katerine, Andreas Buschberger, all front runners at the moment. And Buschberger, I think, might have some company on the inside. He has to drift wide. And yes, indeed, Lucas Holbacker has gotten through into third position there. Holbacker, of course, chasing that win in this race for the Grand Prix win. With Charest, Schmidt and Holbacker separated by just one point coming into this final. Whoever wins out of them will secure the Grand Prix. Mark Reiner-Schmidt trying to go to the inside here of Thomas Charest and makes it stick, dives up the inside. We've seen him set that move up at the last corner for turn one several times already this weekend. Schmidt is an avid superbike racer as well in Germany. Uh, so good on the tarmac. That said, he and many others, of course, sad that the weather has prevented us using the dirt section. Bronson Pierce there on the 1-3-2. Good to see him, uh, the American racer. He's also got some extracurriculars. He's a flat track racer as well as a supermoto racer. Look at the top three. So close together. Schmidt, Charret, Hullbacker. And diving to the inside there is Thomas Charret, but that's opened the door for Lucas Hullbacker. Hullbacker gets a two-for-one special offer, and he moves into the lead. Saw half an opportunity there and made it whole. Lucas Hullbacker is your race leader. Then it's Schmidt, then it's Charret. Charret went for the race lead, and he's ended up down in P3. Buschberger still there in fourth place, ahead of Yuri Katerine in the back of shot as well. Lance Sitniansky in 12th position behind Romeo Fiorentino. Sidney Anski not had the greatest weekend of his career here. Of course, at one time was a teammate to Mark Reiner Schmidt. Under the Mets Legantry they go, and it's still Lucas Holbacker in the lead, but Mark Reiner Schmidt is thinking, well, I've already taken this lead once. I'm sure I can do it again. However, so much easier said than done. Lucas Hullbacker determined coming into this weekend. Got off to a bit of a wrong footing in Busca. And he's taking the opportunity to rectify it if things finish as they are between these three. Of course, it would be Hullbacker with the Grand Prix victory across the weekend. With one point between the three of them, he who crosses the line first will take it. Buschberger's there in fourth place, really keeping pace with these three as well. Buschberger getting used to the Husqvarna and really showing what he is capable of. The KTM, though, a familiar steed for Lucas Hullbacker, and he's once again taken it to the top of the podium. He wins the Super Final and the Grand Prix of Sardinia. What a result then for Lucas Hullbacker. Schmidt, Charret rounding out the podium within that race ahead of Buschberger and Katerine. Elias Samartin there in sixth. And this is what it does to the Grand Prix results. A five-point lead over Schmidt in the Grand Prix results for Hullbacker. Charer, Buschberger, Katerine and Bonnell, your top six in Sardinia. Thomas Charer will be fairly happy, I think, with his efforts this weekend. Of course, not quite matching his stellar performance in Busca, but scoring solid points. Mark Reiner Schmidt also with lots to be optimistic about, but a huge bounce back for this man, Lucas Holbacker. He'll be the happiest of all coming out of this weekend. Our Grand Prix winner, the number 72 MTR KTM rider. The Tramatza Mayor, Sebastiana Morrow, presenting the big trophy to Lucas Holbacker. Our FIM Chief Steward, Sabin Olariu, handing the red plate to Thomas Charret. He retains it. Coming out of Sardinia. Super, super happy. First place, uh, overall podium, super good. Uh, the feeling was great. We struggled with some problems, but in the end, uh, I took the first uh, place on the first race where we won the poker game because we was on slick tires. Uh, second race was not so good. Struggled with the setup. Uh, with fourth place was okay. More was not possible. And the last race, uh, I could. Uh, take the win in the end uh, with real, really hard fights to the end but uh, can be happy and thanks to the team, uh, to KTM, all my sponsors uh, and see you next time in St. Wendel.
And so the red plate retained by Thomas Charest. He's still championship leader by just four points over Mark Reiner-Schmidt, who will be on home turf at Sunk Vendel next time out. Hurlbacker there in third ahead of Steve Bonnell, Yuri Katerin, our top five. Bonnell retains the lead in the rookie class then. Next time we are headed to Germany and Sunk Vendel, 10th and 11th of June. We're going street racing for the first time this year.